Today we're talking about the UMI Crystal, one of the most inexpensive, supposed frameless or bezel-less devices. If this can do what the more expensive ones have done for a lower price tag, it's definitely going to be an interesting proposition. To get one thing out of the way, this is one reflective device. In fact, in some lighting conditions, I'd go as far to say it doubles as a mirror. Now, this is in part due to the Gorilla Glass 4 on both the front and the back, which is good news in terms of resistance to scratches and drops, but it does make the phone a little bit thicker and heavier than most people would have liked. As you probably guessed, such a finish isn't great when it comes to attracting smudges. This one is a complete magnet. And almost ironically, I kind of preferred the finish when it still had the protector on the back. It's also worth noting that whilst individually the sides and the back are comfortable to touch, the transition between the two is sharp and somewhat jarring when you're trying to hold it in the hands. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Another thing that I found, to be honest, took quite a lot of getting used to is that there is no power button on the right hand side. It has been located so that it's towards the left, you almost have to readjust the entire way you're used to using your phone. Now, the screen here really is rather good. The panel in question is provided by the company Sharp. It is a 5.5 inch 1080p display, and for the price, it's pretty good in terms of color reproduction and level of contrast. One thing worth bearing in mind is that compared to other supposed bezel-less smartphones, this one here has an 88% screen to body ratio, which is slightly lower than the 90s and sometimes even 93s we've seen on other devices. So there's a little bit more bezel here compared to some of the competitors, but it's hardly obtrusive. Now, whilst the screen is great when you view it head on, it does have a little bit of a viewing angle problem, which is kind of disappointing considering this is a respected sharp panel. So when you're looking from an angle, especially on broad daylight, compared to other phones, it starts to lose its edge a little bit. It's a shame to see that the camera here is another one of those dual cameras that isn't really a dual camera, which means there is an option for a blur or bokeh mode, but frankly speaking, it's kind of terrible. Even as a single camera, it really doesn't hold up too well. Photos come out very overexposed, and the shutter time is too slow to take photos without blur. To be honest, the front camera is fine. In fact, in some situations, I'd say it's better than the rear camera, which is kind of embarrassing. The only problem for some people will be the placement. Because it's lower down on your phone than you're used to, you will have to lift the device higher to take the same photo. Also, your first 100 shots are almost definitely going to feature your thumb. The model we've actually got here is the higher end version of the two, sporting four gigs of RAM and the MT6750T processor. And to be honest, we've definitely seen better implementations of this chip in other phones, because in this one, it really isn't that fast. The operating system, while fairly pleasant to use, just doesn't feel as responsive as it should be. Trying to do too many things at once, the phone kind of panics and shuts itself down a bit, which is something we've seen phones with the same chipset manage to not do. Now, weirdly enough, of all the seven games from various different genres I downloaded to test the device, all of them worked fine. We were getting pretty much a solid 30 frames per second on just about every single genre of game, bar your sort of first person shooter. Whilst the phone is based off Android 7.0, pretty much a stock version of it, some aspects of it look a little bit dated. So it seems like a bit of a mismatch of past version of Androids. Some of the icons here are flat material icons and others look like they were copied from Android 4.0. Now there is an on-screen navigation bar, but it's a bit of a shame to see that that space on the bottom of the phone has kind of been wasted, that should have been used for this instead. The fingerprint scanner is great, it's actually a really fast one once you can find it. Unfortunately it suffers a similar fate to the Galaxy S8, even though it's easy to reach for, it's hard to know when you're actually on it just because it's so flush with the body. Whilst there isn't too much bloatware on here, the applications that are built in, including the stock messaging and contacts apps, all work fine. The battery capacity here is 3000 mAh, which you would expect given the fairly low power components on offer, would last a long period of time. However, it ends up, whether it's due to poor optimization or something else, being just about average. If you use it conservatively, you'll get about a day and a half, or a day if you use it quite intensively. So that is the UMI Crystal, and this was a very interesting phone to look at because it is one of the cheapest entries into that budget bezel-less realm. And from a distance, I'd say most people would be very impressed by the way the phone looks. The display shouts for attention, and in a lot of lighting conditions, delivers. The only problem is I feel like whilst the premise is great, there are just a few too many sacrifices at this entry-level price point. The camera, the chipset, the heft, all becomes a little bit too much, and whilst it's definitely not a bad phone, I would generally recommend you spend a little bit more and get something better. Thanks a lot for watching, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.